Welcome to Understanding Ruby Blocks. Here's what we're going to do in this video. First, we're going to talk about what a block is. Then we'll take a look at four native Ruby methods that take blocks. Then we'll define our own custom method that takes a block. Let's get started. The most concise way I've found to explain what a block is, is that a block is a way to take behavior as an argument. Most methods take data as an argument. Blocks are a way to take behavior instead. We'll illustrate what's meant by this by taking a look at some examples of native Ruby methods that take blocks. The methods we'll look at are times, each, map, and tap. Here's an example of using the times method. The times method could be described like this. However many times I specify, repeat behavior x. In this case, the number of times we're specifying is three, and behavior x is puts hello. So when we run this, the behavior puts hello will get executed three times. Here's an example of using each. Each could be described like this. Take this array. For each element in the array, execute behavior x. In this case, our array contains three integers, one, two, and three, and the behavior we're passing is puts in. You'll notice an important difference between times and each. Unlike times, each takes a parameter. For each element in the array, the block we pass gets called with that element passed as an argument. In this case, it will mean our block gets called like this, puts one, puts two, puts three. Shortly, we'll see a little bit of the mechanics around how this parameter passing works. Anyway, when we execute this code, we get one, two, three. Here's an example of using map. Map could be described like this. Take this array. For each element in the array, execute behavior x, append the return value of x to a new array, and then after all the iterations are complete, return the newly created array. In this case, behavior x is squaring the value. So we'll do one squared, which is one, two squared, which is four, then 3 squared, which is 9. So the output we see should be 1, 4, 9. Here's an example of using a somewhat less common Ruby method, tap. Tap can be described like this. See this value? Perform behavior x and then return that value. In this example, we're initializing a file, that's the temp file.new, and then inside the block, we're writing some content to that file. The tap method doesn't care about what we do in the block. Its only job is to take that initial value, tempfile.new, and return it after the block is executed. So when we execute this code, it'll just show us the contents of the file that we created. So those were some native Ruby methods that take blocks. Now let's define our own custom method that takes a block. Here's a method I made up called inside tag. The idea is this. You can call inside tag and pass any HTML element you want. In this example, I'm passing P. And then as a block to inside tag, you provide whatever you want. In this example, we're saying puts hello and puts how are you. As the output from inside tag, we get whatever tag we specified. You can see there on lines eight and 11, we get the opening and closing p tag and then inside it we get the output of whatever the block was that we passed now all we have right now is the desired api of this method we don't actually have the guts of this code that would make it work so let's write that code now let's start with the most rudimentary possible implementation of this method that would execute without errors here we have a method definition called inside tag it takes just one argument, which is the tag, and then we're outputting that tag. Here's what the execution looks like. We just get P, which is exactly what we would expect. Now let's add something to inside tag. Let's add an and block parameter. Now for the nitty gritty details of how and block works, see my other blog post and video called what the ampersand in front of and block means. Anyway, now that we've added our and block parameter, we'll add a line that calls the block. All this will do is execute what was provided on lines 7 and 8. 
Let's see how this looks. You can see in addition to that P getting output, there's also hello, how are you, which is exactly what we would expect. This obviously doesn't quite match our desired output. What we want is an actual P tag, and we want that tag to appear before the block text and after it as well. So let's look at how we might achieve that. If we want the tag to appear before the block and after it, all we have to do is add another puts after the block is called. And then we want tag syntax, so we'll obviously want to add some less than and greater than signs so it looks like an HTML tag. Here's what the code looks like with those changes. And here's what the output looks like when we run the code with those changes. The actual output does now match our desired output. There is a certain improvement we could make though. It's maybe not great that the text inside the p tag isn't indented. Let's add something to indent that text. And in making that text indented, we'll see how to write a block that involves a parameter. Let's change the block that we're passing to inside tag so that instead of puts hello and puts how are you, it does tag.content hello and tag.content how are you. That leaves the question of how does this tag.content thing work? Where does tag come from? Well, tag comes from when we do block.call. We can pass an argument with call and whatever we pass ends up as the block parameter. In this case, we'll call tag.new. Now tag is a class I made up just now. It doesn't exist, so we'll have to define it. But the point is that now tag will be an instance of the tag class. So we'll call tag.content hello and tag.content how are you. So in addition to defining an object called tag, we'll have to define a content method on the tag class. Here's what that tag class and content method might look like. All we're doing inside of content is we're putting the value with two spaces preceding it so it gets indented. Here's what this looks like when we run it. Now not only do we have our p tags, but the content inside the p tags is indented. So remember, the key takeaway is that a block is a way to take behavior as an argument rather than data. Thanks for watching this video. To find my blog posts, products, podcast, and other videos, visit codewithjason.com.